Hello everybody, Ryan here or MNR Productions and welcome to my very anticipated LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series Republic Gunship Review. You can see the Republic Gunship on the top left. It's got the Imperial logo, which is the wrong logo and will be the wrong logo on boxes sold from now, which is released in August of 2021 until about December of 2021, where they can finally get the correct Republic logo on there. So nice job, LEGO, on that. We have the set number, which is 7 75309 has 3,292 pieces and it's for ages 18 and up obviously with the black box art. It's $350 in the US which I think is actually a pretty fair price. I mean this is a hefty set. It's a big one and we'll definitely show that off in this review and of course you get two minifigs in the set which are not shown on the front of the box and Mace Windu is the only figure shown on the top there but there's also a clone commander in the set. We'll certainly delve into those here momentarily as well. I debated on whether or not to put this in here but I would like to extend a thank you to lego brand retail for the giant hole in my box the lego ambassador network the lego star wars designers the lego marketing team and the lego group kind of as a whole for making my experience with this set about as bad as you could possibly imagine thanks guys you really make your biggest fans feel great back of the box shows off the ucs gunship at a different angle of course you get a better look at those minifigs included in the set which are according to lego star wars designers just a bonus we have the dimensions of the set which is about 27 inches long it is about the same width even though it doesn't show the width of the dimension like it's kind of important to have the width on something like this with such a big wingspan so it's got about the same wingspan as it does the length though and then its height is about 13 inches so just a bit over a foot you have some images from episode 2 attack of the clones could have thrown in an episode 3 image there and made an episode 3 set 2 but they didn't and then my favorite shot on the back here is the rockets locking into place on the same thing uh with the lego version there i think that's a nice side by side that they put on there three tape seals are all that separate you from destiny with the ucs gunship in this particular case, very easy to cut, obviously. And inside, we should find a large white box, which I assume would help stop bulging on the outer box, but it appears that a lot of people are having box damage issues in general with this one, so it's kind of a shame. I don't know what's going on with the Lego box here in this case, but this is just a very big, bulky set. So we have the white box, and then we're gonna have a bunch of other numbered bags held within. And deep within is the instruction manual. It comes covered in plastic, which is good. You don't want this thing getting bent. A couple sticker sheets. This thing is massive. Wrong logo on the top left again, but on the inside, we have a very nice picture of the gunship from episode two, and this is an episode two set. It could have been an episode three set if the designers cared enough to make it so, but they did not, so we only get the episode two uh, pictures in here, even though it's the exact same in episode three, and they've had many figures from different movies in the same set before, but that's besides the point of this review, kind of. It says, and the winner is. We got a little excerpt about the whole fan vote thing, and then they talk about the model design and the design process of the gunship. There's some more pictures of them with the gunship. Nice picture from Attack of the Clones again. Again, if you want to pause and read any of this, you can. I didn't find any of the information to be uh, worth really noting here. I do like these cutaway cross-section images of the gunship. Show a good amount of the detail that you're going to have on the actual set itself. And then the final design details here. Kind of interesting that they actually note minifigure scale here, that it's not minifigure scale. Uh, usually they don't talk too much about that sort of stuff because it's kind of obvious whether it is or isn't. Here we go. Origin of clone troopers. And then finally into the build. And the build is... A long one. Again, 3,300 pieces or so, and you're looking at about 500 pages of building. It's going to take you a while. A reminder that at $350, both minifigs for this set are exclusive to this set, meaning you won't be able to get them in anything cheaper with Mace Windu here being first. If you want this Mace Windu with these special dirt marks on him, you're going to have to pay the price. He's got a very menacing face. Looks like he's ready for battle. Definitely one of the better Mace Windu face prints we've had. The torso print is very similar, if not exactly the same almost, to some of the other ones we've had, but they did add those little dirt splotches. Therefore, it is definitely a unique version of Mace Windu. You can see more dirt splotches on the back of him. It's a good looking Mace Windu. There's no arguing that. As many are aware, the designers did ask which figures people wanted in the UCS gunship, and Mace Windu was definitely not near the top of that list. Anyway, the missed chance here was for dual molded legs in a $350 set. You would expect it. He would need brown here. The white would break that up, and then you would have the dark tan above that. Unfortunately, they did not go with the dark tan and brown dual molded legs with the white breaking it up don't know why. I guess they had to cut costs somewhere at a $350 set. The same goes for this clone trooper, except even more so. The designers very specifically said that they didn't include a clone pilot in this set because 
all most people really remember from the movies is that they saw a clone with some yellow markings piloting the gunship. Yes, they actually said that for a $350 set made for people 18 and up as a ultimate collector series. No detail left unturned, quote the designers. And uh, this is what we get. So thank you very much, designers. Really appreciate this one. It's, it's a nice slight variant of a clone trooper we've had before. It's a slightly different color than the clone that we had before. And I've seen this come up a lot. It's a figure that is supposed to be an episode two figure. However, they use the exact same torso and leg design from the Clone Wars characters. They just changed the markings around. So that definitely makes sense if you don't think about it. And then removing that helmet, we have the clone face that we saw introduced in the summer of 2020. So nothing new there, but yeah, uh, the figure selection is very disappointing uh, to say the least. Figures aside and into the rest of the build of the set, the stand is something I really like along with this display plaque that shows off the UCS Republic gunship in that very nice blue color. It's got some information about the ship. I did see some people mention that I think they've omitted something or messed up something with the weapons here. I want to say that it was the composite beam laser turrets was not supposed to be two, it was supposed to be four. But other than that, this seems to be pretty on point, but still a little error like that in a UCS set really is a shame. There also is space for both figures on either side of this. So you can have Mace Windu and your clone trooper on either side of the plaque there, and of course in front of where the gunship is going to sit on this big base, which is very large, but the gunship of course is larger. Placing the gunship on the stand is relatively easy as you have to just line up a hole in the bottom of the gunship with this white brick here on the top of the stand, and you guide it into place. Pretty easy to do. And with the gunship on its stand, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's got this slight forward lean, which I think was definitely the best way to do it. I can't imagine a better way to display a UCS gunship than looking like it's flying into battle with troops, obviously no troops actually in it, but troops in the uh, troop bay and everything ready to go and fire at all of the battle droids on Geonosis. I think this just looks spectacular with that slight forward lean. I mean, you could certainly modify this so that it's flat, but like it doesn't look as good like that. It definitely has a charm to it. I'm gonna take the figures away so that we can look at the rest of the model without our vision clouded because it's it's too good and it's such a shame that this has to mar the image that is just spectacular for the UCS gunship. At the front of the gunship, we have the ball turrets and they actually found some pieces that worked really well to make a really accurate look. And of course these can move like they could in previous playset models. I prefer to keep them straight on because I think that's the way they look best. They have these quarter circle white pieces that look really good. They're a nice clean tile look to them. So really appreciate the way that that turned out there in this kind of well area of the front of the gunship. And then we have the green markings on the front as well, which is built in a not technique, meaning studs not on top. And that looks spectacular. It bleeds a little bit onto the side of the gunship there. You can see the exact same on the other side. I think that looks awesome, especially with that gray stripe running down the middle. Perhaps the biggest, I don't want to call it design flaw because there's really no way to fix it, but there is a small gap here and that is really the only place where the gunship just misses, I suppose, if you want to call it a miss. Like I said, there's no way to fix this. It's just a fact of the matter that there's a gap there. But then moving up into the cockpit, we have these awesome printed cockpit pieces. I think that these were perfect for the cockpit size of the gunship here, for a UCS gunship, of course, over the minifig scale size. They gave them each unique prints, very nice dark red as well, worked very well, quality looking print. You can actually pull up either of these and you'll see that there are control panels here. And they use a pretty standard Lego Star Wars control panel piece there, nothing too exciting or different. Now there is some scenes of the gunship where the control panel is like green and stuff. I kind of wish we had gotten that type of control panel, so a little bit of a miss opportunity there perhaps but yeah just a better look at these cockpit pieces I suppose as I place them back on for you and all of that works in really well with the rest of the dark red around the cockpit area obviously the two tones aren't exactly perfectly alike but I think it works more than well enough on the side of the gunship here you'll have the Republic logo thankfully they didn't mess up the logo here and that is a sticker it's not a print unlike those those are some nice prints that's going to be a sticker. You'll see some more stickers with some yellow markings on the side of the gunship here. And there is this big gray blob and some people have an issue with this gray blob. I don't love that this exists on the gunship to begin with. Obviously Lego translating it over has nothing to do with that. Uh, it's really good that Lego got it accurate. I just wish like the actual gunship in universe was like more all white there. I think it just looks sharper in general, but Lego got it accurate. That's the, the deal there. I uh, do have this area here where you can have troops stand if you want. Obviously again, a little bit above that minifig scale so they 
would look a little bit awkward in there. And you actually have a whole space in here. Unfortunately, this panel doesn't lift up or anything, so you can't really get into this space very easily without breaking it off. But if we do, you'll see there is a little bit of space in there. It's not something you actually are able to really use, but yeah, that panel's there and it kind of blocks all of that space because it doesn't move. I believe these stickers here represent the coolant gas vent, so that's a pretty nice detail. But I think for a lot of people, one of the better aspects of this set is going to be these laser turrets on the side, which are of course armored and whatnot to protect the gunner inside. At least that's what the visual dictionary says. It doesn't look too armored to me being just clear glass. Anyway, I have a slight issue with these and that's that they tend to fall off on me. I don't know, whenever I open this up, it, see how it's already starting to separate? It tends to break and I don't know why that is. I definitely didn't build it wrong. So yeah, it, see, and when I put it back down, it starts to separate the other way. And then over time, these are just gonna come off and that's a problem. So I've had that happen a few times. They're not difficult to fix. It's just kind of a pain and gets old after a bit. Now they do have a great print on them, as you can see, and it's gonna be the same on both sides. And you can actually open these up and access, there you go, I broke it off. Uh, you can open this up to access the area where you would put a troop. Now, obviously it's a little bit above minifig scale as it's clear, but you can put troops in there if you want. So you can open and close that as you please. It's a really interesting and well done design for this. This, it's kind of surprising that they didn't go for like the Jurassic World gyro spear. I thought that's what they were going to use for this, but it ended up working out very well there. And it does have a couple points of articulation. You can see the main point back here with this big arm to move the turret. And then you have another point of articulation right there, which gives you a little bit more finite left right movement versus the big swings of the arm. So it all works out very well. And these actually can be stored inside of the gunship if you want to, but like it looks awkward if you do that because there's no other door to like close on that so i usually just leave them out i think it looks best with them out and in their firing position moving into the troop bay it is a very large area you could definitely fit a lot of troops in there if you really wanted to obviously as I've said many times in this review, and we'll probably say many to come, it's above minifig scale, so it's not really made for that. But you do have a couple control panels in the back. You'll recognize those from the cockpit. And you have a few blue lights on there. I like the red markings on the ground. I think they did a generally good job with this space for what it is, which is just an empty space. So can't really complain about that. You do have some missiles on the side of the door for the gunship there. You can see them better on the other side. They're just kind of stored there. And then the doors do close. However, because this is not the Clone Wars version of the gunship, you still got the ball turrets that are going to go here and there was no front door in this particular version. So I personally prefer the other version of the gunship that has the other door. I just think it looks a little bit cleaner, but this isn't that. This is the episode two slash three gunship with the ball turret. So that basically gets rid of the idea of having that other door. I'm sure some people will modify this to give it another door and close it up, but that is what it looks like with the door closed. I'll close the other door on the other side. As you can see, it's not much. You, you aren't blocking off very much space there. Really just like four or five studs here and that's kind of it. So kind of unfortunate for people that wanted doors that close all the way. You're gonna have to do that yourself. Um, and as far as like the design on the doors, it's very well done. It's pretty accurate. Other than the fact that these should be rounded, not squared. Not really a way to fix that, just fact of the matter. Having the gaps there is very nice as well. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So I think those came out very nicely. I just think they uh, don't cover a lot. You also have these handles here at the top for some troops to hold on to when the gunship is maybe going through some rough fire and there's more handles up top in the middle here. So that's kind of it for the interior of the gunship. On the back side of the gunship, we have a tail ramp, which can be dropped by pulling on this gray piece here. And you can see it drop down. You can have, you know, a speeder bike or troops load in through it. There is no speeder bike included on it in this particular case, nor the rails to hold the speeder bike or anything. So that's just kind of a blank area, but it's nice that it opens up. It's an accurate feature so we can close that back up and it kind of attaches to a couple studs there that hold it into place but this whole area is really like really wide it's very very cool how wide it is it gets really fat at the back absolutely love that now above that is this little ball turret and i have a slight issue with this and that's if you overextend it it pops out really easy although it's probably part of the design of it is so that you can get it out when you need to so other you know don't overextend it but you know you're not gonna be playing with this so it shouldn't be a big deal that it pops out somewhat easily to me but yeah you can move this around do whatever you want with it but I uh, much like the front ones like to keep it as straight on as possible because I think that is the way that it looks best you can see very nice detailing around back some vents or whatever here and then as we get to the top we have probably one of the best parts of this UCS gunship and that's the uh, missiles here that are going to be able to spin as they load 
load into the uh, firing mechanism here that's going to fire it out the front tip of the gunship and I think that works really well these don't obviously don't actually fire out of there but it is a function that works phenomenally well as it is you can see some stickers here another sticker here very nice detailing with the stickers on this particular set obviously on the uh, side of the engines and obviously this is where the missiles fire out of as well some very nice stickers to add in that dash of red that you need because they don't really have a piece that's going to do that job you get a little bit of a checkered black sticker design here nice looking but uh, obviously stickers are stickers and people are going to have their problems with them as we look at the wing you can see the wing is very expansive as well very large wing on this particular set of course the same on the other side of the gunship and you have a couple of laser cannons as well here these ones in particular are unmanned the play sets they let you man them but in reality they are unmanned and you can see some of the inner workings of it there these are printed they're a different print than the ball turret on the side and they're not really made to open up but you can pull them off easily enough if you really want to get to the inside of this for whatever reason but yeah i don't really see a reason to do that it's just something you can do if you want again same print on the underside then we have four missiles on the underside as well ready to go you'll see the exact same thing on the other side of the gunship so very symmetrical set in most ways there uh, anyway underneath the wing is another one of my favorite parts of the set and that is basically the support beam for the wing that kind of juts out on both sides you can see it on the right and on the left there and i really like what they did with it on the front side it's red and then if we spin the gunship around to the back it's going to be white so it's accurately color matched to what it's supposed to be i think it looks spectacular and it's obviously something to help keep the wings uh from just sagging too much or falling down there isn't a lot of sag anywhere on this set actually for as big as it is uh they did a great job of keeping everything pretty stiff and i really appreciate that as far as the design goes i think it's a very strong design so this works well and while these are can be somewhat weak if you were to like knock into them you can see they're somewhat loose uh, as far as the aesthetics of them it's pretty spot on they look great the final part of the gunship we have to cover is how the heck do you move this thing this isn't a place like gunship that has a handle that you can just pick it up with you have to actually figure it out now this thing is very heavy and very unwieldy if you don't know what you're doing if you try to pick it up with one hand in the middle here Obviously, it's very back heavy. That's not going to work out well for you. You're going to need a second hand of support. You want to put that hand right about here, and then you can pick the setup pretty easily like this. And while there are other ways to do it, this is the best way I found to hold the gunship. It's really stable. Your left hand basically props up that back side, while your right hand holds up the front side and gives you a little extra support for that back weight. You can see very back heavy there, so you don't want to be letting go with one of your hands. That's going to be a problem. And you're going to be able to guide it on your stand very easily when you're holding it with two hands. It's not a problem it's just something that i don't want to be moving a lot personally because i feel like it's one of those things that's really easy to like lose track of if you're like oh hey i gotta do something with my left hand all of a sudden the whole back side of the gunship's going towards the floor not a great thing the other thing while we have the gunship off the stand is the bottom of the gunship you can see they have tiled off the bottom so that you actually could land this thing on like a hard surface and not worry about it scratching anything so all the inverted tiles are on there and you could just place it down on something like this table and even with it on the table like this and as much weight shifted forward as i could get it's still a little bit back heavy you can see it has a bit of a tendency to hold itself back a little bit more than you may may like and uh, even lean back all the way at some points if you push it back too far not something that you're going to encounter in regular use but just something to note it's very back heavy here's the gunship versus the 2013 playset gunship and you can just see the size of the thing is absolutely massive i just figured i'd have to show that if you can look past the error on the box art which to be fair is not a pretty hard thing to look past but more difficult to look past perhaps is the figures and even more difficult than that the comments the designers had about the figures after asking fans which many figures they wanted in a set made for the fans voted on by the fans and then told us that we couldn't tell the difference between this and a proper clone pilot from episode two because most people buying a 350 dollars set most certainly would only remember that a yellow clone ship was piloting it not the actual clone pilot would be piloting a clone gunship it's just things that don't make sense for 100 please mr trubeck anyway if you can look past all that we if we exclude the figures exclude the box art and uh maybe a small error on there i'm not even sure if that's an error i just saw some people talking about it uh the gunship is fantastic, dude, and that's the worst part about it. Like, it's so sad that all the stuff around this set has to be so bad in the way LEGO handled it, that the gunship is so fantastic it gets overlooked in some ways. I love the gunship. It is so amazingly beautiful, and it's so ginormous. I mean, you saw it next to that other uh, 2013 gunship. It is way bigger than I even thought a UCS gunship would be, and I love it. I don't even know where to display it. It's that freaking big. It doesn't fit on my shelves. Like, you can't tell me it's going to fit back there because it's not. 
It's literally like a UCS sand crawler, even bigger than a UCS sand crawler with wings. That's what I'd always thought it would be. And uh, it looks so beautiful. I'm in love with the thing. I think they did a spectacular job bringing the gunship into UCS form. I think everything just surrounding it really sucked. And that's the real shame with this set. But overall, it's an awesome, awesome UCS model. The figures that are quote unquote a bonus just uh, bring it down real bad. I don't know. I think the set, if it was just the gunship, I'd be giving it like a 9.5 or 10 out of 10. I, I have no real qualms with the gunship. It looks spectacular. It's on par with UCS sets like the Slave 1 and the Sandcrawler and, and stuff like that we've had in the past that I really love. I don't know where to rank it. I like a 9 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. It's still really good. And I really, I would suggest it if you're okay with supporting the things Lego said and has to say about us fans that wanted these things after not having a prequel UCS set for 10 years. And I can understand people that don't want to buy it because of that it's it's good to vote with your wallet and stand up for what you want to stand up for uh but but man it's uh it'd be hard to pass this thing up i'll tell you what it's a it's a very nice set and very much uh worth the money in my opinion minus the figures so let me know what you guys think in the comments below i'm sure there's a good number of people who don't give a rat's buttocks about those minifigs and just love the gunship and i wish i could be in that same boat but i'm just not